Ross says, hi, Mehran, male 31 UK. Thank you for that, Ross. Says, I think I'm quite badly depressed in my life. Well, it's a part of life, isn't it? It's like day and night, wave of the ocean, up and down. There's changes in moods that we have just as we see changes in the weather, in the air, in the ocean, uh, calmness and choppiness. That's part of it. It doesn't mean that we always have to be in perfect mood, up mood. Well, even the hippopotamus sometimes is not in the mood. A crocodile is just sitting somewhere. <laughs> a horse doesn't feel like doing his job well. Doesn't want to be a good show jumper that way. Just doesn't want to. But we accept all that. But when it comes to us, we say, oh, there's something wrong with me. Not necessarily. <laughs> we are usually... Uh, Beyond, uh, beyond the clinical depression, which that has to do with uh, doing tests by your doctor and visiting your doctor, because as you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't want to mislead anyone. You have such problems you are concerned about, you got to discuss it with your doctor. But beside any clinical reasons that you know they will do a test on your blood and see if there is any chemical imbalance or not, the mood swings here and there, the mood changes, uh, it has a lot to do with, um, with your state of thinking, thoughts. Uh, one of the problems we human beings have is that uh, carte blanche, we have given a carte blanche to our mind, to our thoughts. We have accepted our thoughts as a source, as a source of information, judgment, accuracy, credibility. I want you to ask why. Who died and left them in charge as a source? Why do we actually believe our thoughts? Why? Why do we actually think our thoughts are judgments and they're credible? On what basis? What evidence has thought shown us that it has all the knowledge that there is to know and its words is heavenly? On what basis? Thought is a production of material process. In the material process, it gets its information, some of its information, the thoughts that we want to create from the information we have stored in our consciousness. That's the field of the known, where thought is born. But then there's other thoughts, transient thoughts. Those are the ones that are intrusive, and those are the ones that are interfering and making suggestions that we find them puzzling. It's not me. That's not about my interest. Why is it there? So it annoys us. And we, we try to reason with thought. The thought that actually, to begin with, is rigged, is malfunctioning, and has created some kind of a intrusive, unacceptable, uninvited, unagreeable thought now, we want to reason with it that we are not it and expect it to understand what we are saying. And that's preposterous, isn't it? It's like you're debating with a crazy person who accused you of something that you're not, and you're now expecting that person who's actually hitting not on all cylinders to accept and agree that his views and opinions that was uttered are wrong. Well, if he knew that it's wrong, he knew that he's crazy, he wouldn't have uttered it. The fact that he's uttered it, that means he's incapable of reasonability and facts and accuracy and credibility, credible opinion. Now, you're, however, you're doing the same thing with your own thoughts. What do you think this thought is? You think it's you? Thoughts are not you. Thoughts are suggestions that unless you're doing calculations, you're creating instinct, you're creating a thought to build something, create something, solve something that is of mathematical or production or design. All other thoughts are transient thoughts. They have no credibility and they're crazy thoughts. Random thoughts, material process, and all these based on 
all these information has been introduced to you throughout your life by TV, news, media, books you read, movies you watched, everything else that somehow found its way in your mind as an information. Things you saw in the street, things you, you, you read, things you heard, all that. Think of yourself as the library, the main city library. It's got thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of books in them. And not all these books have been bought, purchased, and deposited by you in this library. Other people brought in somehow, they found their way, they've been donated, they've been given, they've been just, some people died and all the books were just given to library and all, they found their way in this library. They're now deposited in the library. And think of the library as your consciousness. And think of all these books that somehow they found their way into that library as thoughts. Some of these thoughts are yours. Some of these books in this library deposited are your personal books and experiences and things that you learned. On that basis, you have that information in there. You have deposited that book in that library. But most of the books in that library is not yours. They found its way in there, donated. Somehow they're there. Like the consciousness, some of the thoughts are your creation because you have a purpose for them in order to accomplish your tasks and the goals you set in life. But most of the thoughts that are created in your head are nonsense, are garbage. You have nothing to do with them. They're the books that other people, somehow they found their way in the library, in your, in, you know, your conscious, the library, the city library, the main library. And they happen that the book, the wind blows, or somebody opened the book, reading it, and left it there on the table. You pass by, the book is open, you see it. That's a thought. But because the book is open and you got notice of what's written in that book, that doesn't mean you believe in that what is written there. Just because a thought comes to your mind which has nothing to do with you, it's transient thought, doesn't mean it's a thought that you welcomed or you designed. So what do you do when that book is open and you're going from one part of the library to the other part to get to the book that you want? You see it is open and you notice what it says, whatever it says, got nothing to do with you. So you pass by because you realize it's not the book you chose to read, but you can read it as you pass by, you notice it. Same thing when transient thought comes in, you notice you just pass by. You're not supposed to say, oh, uh, uh, let me read this book. Yeah, I noticed the book. Well, I'm not going to sit down and read it. There's so many books are open in this library. I'm not supposed to read them. They're all same thing. So many thoughts are created in my brain that's got nothing to do with me, and it's not my intention to pay attention to them, but I have the ability to, to, to notice everything that is, goes by. I have the ability, but I don't have the mandate to focus on everything that goes by, every book that is open, every thought that comes to my mind. So what I do, I do the same thing as I do in a library when I pass by an open book, the thought. I pass by, continue my way, do not pay attention to it, and therefore that book does not become a source of your information that you would now question or consider the question and to want to respond to it. When you ignore it, there is no question to be bamboozled by or waste your time and energy on. And if the book is written some nonsense in it or some opinion that is to begin with is it's written just because it's written doesn't mean it's the document of accuracy. Many people can write things. And just that book is open and something is written to it, in it, that is not accurate about you. Now you want to fight it. Fight it with what? With the book that cannot answer. So you think because it's not changing its page or writings in it, therefore it's insisting that it's accurate, it's correct. Because it's not changing, it's written, and I can't change the writing. No, it just means it was wrong to begin with, it was written wrong, and you don't have to debate something that is wrong. You don't have to make a change that is wrong. You just pass by, you ignore what is wrong. Same thing with thought. When a thought comes in, it's because it's a glitch, it's a problem. The thought has created inaccurate suggestion because of the needs that we've talked about, the other video that I've uh, trimmed out and put in here. And since to begin with, that is a wrong thought, then you can't make that thought, no matter how many times you go over it in your head, to change its quality, its characteristics. If it was not 
a wrong thought, it wouldn't appear. When it has appeared, it will stay that way no matter how many times you argue with it. So the fact that you argue with it, you get frustrated because it can't change a malfunctioning thought, product. Malfunctioning part of the mind creates transient thoughts that are not um, credible. So when it's already coming from a man malfunctioning source, what do you expect it to change if you keep going through your head? Why do you debate with a crazy person? Why do you debate with a thought that is wrong? Because it's like that book. It has no capability of changing its pages and switching what's written on it. It just comes in one way. It malfunctioned and it's here. Now you want to reason with the malfunctioned thought. You want to reason with the crazy author of that book. And there's no capability for that book to change because of your reasoning and your credible information. It stays that way. Then you say, well, no matter what I say, it doesn't change. So I have to keep saying it so it will change. It doesn't have a capability to change because to begin with, it's a wrong book. Same thing with the, with the thought that you, that you argue with, debate with, and try to convince the transient thought that you want to take that back. Well, if it wasn't malfunction, it wouldn't even suggest that. And these sort of thoughts that you expect them to change them because you reason with them, you argue with them, you ask them why. These are OCD thoughts. These are thoughts that don't have a capability to change. And because they're there, you think, well, then I've said all these things, but it hasn't changed. It still happens in my head. It's still there. So that means it must be right then. It might be right then. No, it's like saying a crazy person who doesn't understand reasoning it must be really sane. No, it's still crazy. That's why I can't understand. Same thing here. It's a malfunctioning thought, not a credible thought. It's a wrong thought. And you're trying to change its character, thinking that it's a right thought. It just made a mistake. No, it's a, <laughs> it's a thought that doesn't concern you, doesn't describe you, has nothing to do with you. It's a negative thought. It's a transient thought. It's an OCD thought. And these thoughts could be about anything about your sexuality, about anything else that you're not. This is the characteristics of a transient thought, of an OCD thought. Always something that you're not. Always something that is negative. Always something that creates that energy of debating because thoughts find order in process of thinking because they have no other place to call home so they want some process to be part of it so they could be focused there otherwise they're scattered all over the place and we've talked about it in the other video but in here you should understand that the best thing to do is to pass by that book that is open and nonsense written on it don't try to argue with it it's got no capability of changing it's like trying to argue with the dog shit that you see you're, pa you see, you're passing by the street and keep looking at it and says, how dare you being smelly and being there as a dog shit and bacteria come. It won't change. It's, that's what it is. That's the only thing it can be. So you, what do you do? You pass by. Continue your way about your business. Focus on life. Do not allow thought to take away life which happens in the now away from you because thoughts always take you away from the now, away from life, away from the present moment because thoughts come from where? Consciousness, memory. Where is memory? Memory is the past. Past is dead, non-existence. So your living turns into death, non-existence, death of the past. You're wasting your time trying to change something that doesn't exist. That's what I'm trying to say. Transient thoughts don't have existence. So don't waste your time trying to reason with it or change them because they never existed to begin with. They never ha have any accuracy to them. It just creates havoc on you to defend yourself based on your who you are, what you're happy to be with, and that thought is not you and your ego and so on. You go to fight. It's like somebody... Um, um, swears at you or says something inaccurate or accuses you of something in the street. So you say, hey, what do you say about that? What's wrong with you? And he says the same thing because he just wants to insult you. 
and you physically get into altercation and you beat the crap out of him. And then you kind of get satisfied. So, okay, see, told him it's not. Now you want to do the same thing with the thought. But the thought, there is no physical altercation with it. You can't get into a physical satisfaction that I beat the crap out of it. So in your mind, you try to kill it, refuse it, resist it, change it, push it away. And it's got no personality. It's just there. And then you say, oh, because it's there, that means it's true. No, it has no capability to change because it's non-existence. You cannot get rid of something that is non-existence. It's an idea. It's a thought. It's a pictorial. It has no actuality to it. So you can't expect by reasoning or resisting trying to get rid of something that is non-existence. has no actuality to it. That's why it bamboozles you and makes you think, oh, why, is that? why doesn't it go away? Because you're supposed to go away, not it. You're supposed to move on. You have the capability of life and living in the present moment. The present moment has many other places to go. So you can go. It can't because it has no existence, no actuality, no reality to it. So it's just there until it disappears like a dog shit. Until the sunshine and the air and the rain it gets rid of it. Because it has no reality in this thought. It, has, it can't be anything else but that. The malfunction. Production of a malfunction. So what you should be doing. Just a book in the library. Just pass by. That's your power. Not try to reason with a crazy. Not try to reason with a thought that is a suggestion that has no substance to try to change it. When it doesn't have a substance, it won't change. It's just there looking at you. So you just say, okay, you keep looking. I'm going to go. I'm not going to pay attention to you. When you don't pay attention to it, it dissipates because it finds nobody's looking at it. When nobody's looking at it, it finds its life in attentions that others pay to it. It finds its existence being mattered when people look at it, when you look at it, when you pay attention to it. When you don't and you pass by, it dissipates. Its existence is in your attention, not in itself. That's why as long as you debate with it and pay attention with it, it becomes more alive. But when you don't pay attention to it, it goes away. It's like you push your hand against the wall. As long as you're pushing, you feel the pain. Why? Because you're creating that by taking the wall as an obstacle. When you let go of the pressure, there is no pain because you did not consider it a place to take it seriously as a threat and you simply are not paying attention to it. So there is no interaction with it. When you pay attention to these thoughts, they become noticeable. When they're noticeable, then you debate with them and you can't get rid of them because they have no existence. And then you wonder, oh, the, the, I can't change them because you're paying attention to them. So don't pay any attention to them. Just keep going. Focus on your life. Build your life. Be happy with the things that you do. Be confident of who you are, what you are, your sexuality, your anything that it is that you are, that's what you are. You don't have to take suggestions from thoughts or crazy thoughts and then try to debate it and think that I have to change this to be who I am. You don't have to change anything to be who I are. Otherwise, I walk in the street, many people would say things, could say things. I'm not supposed to be changing them to be to continue be who I am. I can keep going where I go and be who I am and I'll always be who I am, regardless of what people say. Same thing with thoughts. Thoughts are like people, they crazy people say things. You pay no attention to it, you continue your own life then you won't be depressed because you're not buying into these ideas that you're just telling me that you feel depressed. You feel depressed because you're buying into these thoughts about you. Like you're running and people say, oh, you can't run, you can't run. No, as long as you're running, you can, regardless of what they say. And then you will win the race. So keep on running, keep on moving. Don't pay attention to all these books opened up, all these thoughts, transient thoughts, all these suggestions that oh, your sexuality is this, you're not uh, this, you're not that, you're against. All that is just nonsense. Don't pay attention to it. Move forward. Same thing as thoughts that brings depression to you. 
I hope that is some kind of explanation about the uh, glitches we have in our minds. It's part of humanity, you know. No machine is perfect. We are not perfect. We have glitches. What does it mean? Because we have glitches, which you've got to believe that you're the glitch. No, it's a glitch that has come to intrus be intrusive to your actuality, your quality. Not that, oh, because of that, then uh, I am not. No, that's imposture. Not you. All right, it's, it's a long discussion here, but uh, this is just part of that, maybe. Mm. If you have any questions about these sort of things, or HOCD and things like that, I have videos on it. You can take a look and see how brain, mind, thought functions, and then uh, know what to do. Uh, 